And 2013 was also a transformational year for me from a career perspective. Okay. Because I went on maternity leave in 2012, end of 2012, came back mid-2013. I had been replaced by five people. What? So fast forward, I even met a business partner through that Kenya Business Council called Musa Machoka. Mm -hmm. So we become business partners. By that time, after my brother had moved to Nairobi, we set up a company called Zuri Investments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, entrepreneurship. And Zuri was driven from the Kirinyaga Road passion. And its driving force was offering finance debt in the form of microfinance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But aside, of, aside from just giving you microfinance, we wanted to teach you good corporate governance, how to keep your books. You see all those things that we yes. talked about? Uh, how do you set up a business? How do you, because a lot of times we'll receive opportunities, even I personally, of people who need capital. And they'll be like, oh, we need capital. But you ask them where are your audited accounts, they don't have. Mm. So we started Zuri to offer microfinance loans, but aside from offering is to build these companies. And our vision ultimately was to connect these companies in Kenya with like-minded companies in Dubai mm. for capacity building, for mergers and acquisitions. Mm -hmm. That was the brain and the soul and the genesis of Zuri. So we onboard a new partner and now we've put in our own money. We are running this microfinance shop. We are together till then. Ah, yeah, I'm just in shock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On top of your main gig. <laughs> On top of my main gig. Yeah. So this is in 2010, 11. Mm. At the same time, I'm actively part of Kenya Business Council. At the same time, the ambassador and I are speaking actively around this person has come to Kenya. So one of the things that um, we were instrumental, my company in doing, is when Kenya was looking to set up the framework around the special economic zone, they came to Dubai. What? And the then ambassador, uh, the then uh, minister was uh, Cabinet Secretary Mohamed Aden, mm -hmm. who was uh, formerly the Barclays Bank of Kenya MD. Mm. Remember Mohamed Aden? Mm. We spent a lot of time with him. We took him to free zones, uh, made introductions. We were also part of the company that bid to set that up because we had liaised with another special economic zone operator in Dubai. Yes. So now you see my. My company is also beginning to do business development work. Back home. Back home. Uh, yeah, yeah. How do you, did you also start engaging with the private sector back home at this time? On, in my own personal capacity, yes. Uh -huh. uh, through Zuri. But then um, remember the friend my brother and uh, my, my brother spoke to to speak to me about taking the job for 10,000 dirhams. Yes. Chris Ocheng, he had moved to Kenya mm -hmm. and he was working for Centum. And Centum uh, had just started developing two rivers. So we touched base and he came and pitched two rivers to my boss. <laughs> so my boss is like, okay, this girl keeps bringing opportunities. I'm like, yeah, but you said we'll do Kenya. This is a fantastic opportunity that you shouldn't let go. He looked at it and he said, they wanna build this in Kenya? What? Amazing. Okay, Marcy, we can't do this right now. We still need to yes. get our house in order. But he said, I promise you we'll do something in Kenya. So from a capacity building, you see I'm involving him. We're meeting all these ministers. He's like, okay, sorry, who are you again? Are you connected to the first family? Mm. Just like, cheers, I took him away. <laughs> and he has come and seen Kenya. He's come and seen Kenya. In fact, you see... We need to speak about this. If you've been in Kenya and you leave, you're so happy to leave because you you don't see, you, you, you're thinking sometimes it's a dark continent that you're living. I'm yeah. going outside for opportunities. But why is it that other people come and they see? Yeah. This same place with a very different lens. Yes. This same place that you think is, is this, other yeah. people are seeing it from a different lens. Yeah. So he looked at the, and this is somebody who's done this for years across the world. Yes. And he could see. Wow. And he could see. Okay. Yeah, so fast forward, 2012, get married. Hey! 
hey, you skipped to dating. <laughs> you left it like he was my friend. <laughs> he was my we friend. We met in a social setting. <laughs> <laughs> Sipping water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, why well, get married? <laughs> get married 2012 and we were good friends for a long time. Mm. So even the transition to marriage, we actually ask ourselves, did we date? <laughs> we don't remember a long dating period, yeah. yeah. We were very very good friends. So get married 2012, 2013, we get a baby. Mm. And 2013 was also a transformational year for me from a career perspective. Okay. Because I went on maternity leave in 2012, end of 2012, came back mid 2013. I had been replaced by five people. What? Yes. <laughs> five people. What? And my boss was like, you are a key man risk. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> You're never going to do that to me again. <laughs> <laughs> First from our industry perspective it is investments investment banking yep. is high inter- like from a man hour perspective mm. is many hours long working hours mm. amazing bonuses mm. like you went to our parking lot in DIFC and you just see Ferraris Bugattis mm. Maseratis those are cars of people you know not celebrities mm who are working with you you're taking the same elevator so you see i'm really interacting with tangible wealth mm. by the way mm. real ta- real talk real talk this is wealth that is on a global standard yes this is wealth on a global standard the people our company is uh, our investors mm. they are high net worth generational wealth mm, 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 mm. so when i come back Um, 2013, first my boss said, I actually wasn't sure whether you're coming back because I think he was taken aback by the fact that, Haya, you, you mean this chick can actually leave? <laughs> you know when someone has always been there, yeah. when they leave, it's, yeah. it's like it sinks in different. Yes. Then they're like, okay, we find one person. Okay, but she's doing this and this and this. We can't find another person who can do all these things. So find another person. So find another person, then find another person. And I thank God because of that multi-skilled and that's why I find it hard to say this is what I do. Because mm, mm. I never do one thing and I've never done one thing from Kerenyaga Road, you see, yep. to taking this job and being thrown in the fire from moving from 12 to four employees. Wow. So all these things were training. So my boss tells me, okay, here's a piece of paper. This is your new title. But I want you to write your own job description. So what what title does he give you? Uh, I think managing director corporate finance. Mm. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Do I want to do corporate finance now? We've done that and corporate finance is repackaging companies, raising debt, raising equity. We take a break. No, so I'm looking, I'm like, mm, I've done that, but I want something in Africa. So I'm bringing him more African opportunities. He's like, ah, that one is hard. Ah, maybe not. So the more I'm doing that, uh, I tell him, by the way, why don't we go on a road show and meet companies that we can either partner with? Mm. So he says, okay, fine. Uh, we can do that. So I arrange a road show. We come, me, my boss, and another colleague. Explain and we what, meet. Explain to somebody what a road show is. A roadshow is uh, an avenue to raise money. Uh, so you're going to investors to look for capital to raise. But also for me, I was using the roadshow as a low-hanging fruit because one, we're in the business of capital raising, but also it is an opportunity for us to meet people and maybe build a synergy mm-hmm. here and there. So we came on the roadshow. We met so many companies and it was like, oh, I'm, I'm amazed that there is so much private equity um, potential in Kenya let's find an opportunity that's a low hanging fruit what okay so we jump into 2014 so okay so but, but so in 2013 okay let me let me let me slow you down mm. there's this there's, there's two things that you've that 
that again I say you're not just your career you're a yeah. holistic human being yeah. now you've gotten married yeah and you've become a mother yeah what's that like when you joined Dubai you were uko uh, uh, Enjoying the, the 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 solo life, you're yeah, single. Yeah. You had, you had, you you didn't have as much responsibilities. Yeah. So what does that be do for you? Hey, that was transformational. Thank you for bringing me back to that because uh, something also important happened when our daughter was born, and I held her in my hands. I looked at her and I thought about my life and what my life had become, and I was like, Hey, God, it is time for you and I to reconcile. <laughs> And I call her birth date the date of my reconciliation with God. Oh. Yes. In the Dubai period, you had sort of drifted away from God. Yes. Okay. Were I you was going to church? more. I was actually going to church, but I was I was parting. Uh, okay. And also the company I was keeping because mm. of also the career. You yes. know, you're doing high dinners, mm. nini, yeah, socializing, but within a very safe environment. I get it. So for me, it was the time to... Oh, She's actually a girl. I'd mm. prayed for a girl for a firstborn. And she is so cute. But my goodness, she can't be doing the things I've been doing. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, so I need to lead by example. Mm. So that time I just looked at her and I felt so much love. Mm. The love of a mom. The love that my mom gave me. And the love of God, that God had protected me from so many things. Now, my universe of friends has also changed. Yeah, mm, mm. I have Buddhists for friends, I have Indians, mm. I have Colombians, I have Ara. I had all sorts of friends. Mm. All sorts of friends. So going to church was optional. Yep. You see? And then um, now in this social setting, things are also a bit different. Yeah. But subliminally in my spirit and in my heart I knew you know how you just know I need to make it right mm. and stop being lukewarm with my relationship with God I knew it I knew it wow but the birth of my daughter and now that piece that period that period of pregnancy birthing and motherhood mm. just gave me another love like never before mm. yeah Wow. So that and, and marriage, what about marriage? What did that do for you? Or now it was just, ah, now we're together. You had, you had it such was, a friendship that... <laughs> no, it was, now I have my family. Mm. Remember now after my brother left, oh, there, yes. was, there was Koki. Mm. And me and Koki, you'll see Mercy, you see Koki. And people will be like, I see you, I, I know the Koki is much shorter. I'll just see the short one following you. Or if I see you, I just need to scoop around, I'll see <laughs> Mercy. Mercy. <laughs> Yeah, so Koki was always there and has always been there. What is it like to be a parent in such an environment? Like Koki must have then come through for you insanely. Because Kwanza given Alex's career, working yes. in Emirates and being gone 15 out of 30 days flying. Wow. Koki was solid. That's why I'm like, Koki, solid. Because when the kids were sick, Koki was there. When I needed to travel for work because my work also involved now after 2013 mm. it evolved a lot of travels a lot of travels mm. i will leave my home with koki wow 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 i'll be like here that is crazy yeah so i honor i honor koki i love you so much <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's powerful god gave you somebody as a helper in that time yes with the demands both you and your husband had. Yes. Question. Support and, system. And I and I don't know why I jumped over this one, especially with all that I've been learning from financial literacy. Mm. As you started getting making money. Yeah. Did you reinvest back home? Did you save? Did you waste? What what was your financial understanding like? My financial understanding was good. I did invest back home. We actually did uh, significantly with Alex. Mm. We bought a lot of real estate. We started businesses. Uh, we started we started a couple of businesses, more than one. Mm. So leave the microfinance. We started another one called Sin Bean in South B. What was that? What was that about? That one was a lounge. For real? Sports lounge, yeah. For real? 
Yeah, that was now with my brother. Yes. Because remember him is coming off music entertainment. Mm, mm, mm. And by the way, he's a marketer and accountant. Accountant. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So why back home? Did you always like in your mind know you're coming back home? Yes. So for you you didn't go for good? No. I go for I went for a mission to learn. Wow. I went for a mission to learn. So what phase of at that time what phase Okay, what are the investments did you do? Those ones pred predominantly. Okay. There okay. was a lot of real estate and now investing in businesses, intangible businesses. We also did a lot of um, we call it our ministry but investing in people. What in does that education. mean? Education. Oh, a lot. Yeah, in education, we started a, a whole computer lab where Alex went to school. And actually, computer as a lesson is one of the leading subjects in that school, in Machakos. What? Yeah. I When I think of our investment, I think 50% went to people. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is so powerful. Mm. I just wanted to ask, just because I'm like, I'm sure being in this place, Life is expensive, but mm -hmm. you're also making good money. And yeah. I just wanted to figure out, okay, what, what kind of financial decisions, what decisions were you making? Yeah. Why were you making them? Yeah. Let's go back to this roadshow. Yeah. So you come back to the, in this roadshow and you come here with your boss. Yes. Looking for investment opportunities. Looking for investors. May I told him we're going to look for investors. We're going to pitch. But oh, also, yeah, looking for investors. Yes, we're looking for investors to invest in one of our funds. Uh -huh. But also I'm using it as an opportunity. Oh, I forgot to say, in 2013 when I came back, our company had invested in a grooming company mm -hmm. called the grooming company. And the grooming company had three main businesses. One was a nail salon, mm -hmm. nail spa. Mm -hmm. Another one was a hair for women called Jet Set. So this one was called N Enber Jet Set and 1847, which was male grooming. High end. Mm. Luxury. I took a couple of dignitaries from Kenya there for a treat. And they'll be like, okay, we've traveled around the world. We haven't seen anything like this. So our- And this is your company as a personal, not where you're working. No, 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 where I was working. Okay, okay. Investbridge. Okay, okay. We had invested in this chain of amazing, amazing grooming company. Mm. So uh, when I came back, now if remember I'm doing corporate finance and business development for Africa. Mm. But since business development for Africa was new, I needed to do something that brings bread and butter to the company. Yes. So I was appointed to be the lead for the grooming company. Mm. What that meant is I needed to know their strategy, I needed to do their audits, I needed to know their business from a place where an investor has invested. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time there. I learned a lot. It humbled me that no experience is in vain. Mm. Because I could see the rationale for their decision making was from a customer centrism perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This lady used to import waxing gel, manicure things all the way from Australia. Not that they're not there in Kenya, in, mm. in Dubai. Yes. They're there, but you'll be like, mm, this quality, when we did some lab work, we realized it's, it actually has an effect on the skin she will import the best. So as we're coming from a place of investment and we're like, why are we spending so much money importing things from Australia mm. when these things are locally uh, available in Dubai? But then she'll sit with me and say, no, this is the rationale. When I opened this nail bar, I was in, um, she was in Hollywood. Mm. She had spent some time in Hollywood and she had seen the opportunity and the lack of that business in Dubai. So when she came, she said, I need royalty kind of service. Mm. And I'm going to open the highest level of salon and experience for my customers. Yep, it will be expensive, but worth it. Yes, and it wasn't so expensive, but if you ever went there and then you went to a place that was cheaper, mm. you could feel the difference. <laughs> From just the seating, mm. the sink, you know, you're not here the sink would be in front of you. So from an ergonomics perspective, Yay. she thought through. Yeah. Eh? She thought through. I have not seen anything like that anywhere else in the world. What? Yeah. Okay. Amazing. 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 From the decor, the training, the staff used to be trained continuously. Mm. Rational. 
why are you doing this? Trained to upsell, trained to treat the customers well. You know, you sit there, someone brings you a tea or coffee. They're like, oh, Miss Mercy, last time you were here, we saw you like a green tea. Do you like a green tea? We have jasmine tea. I'm like, what? Give me whatever. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Experience. Mm. So if you're running a business, why should I come back? Mm. You could be a bit more expensive, but the experience that you give me will differentiate you from John, Kamau, and Otieno. Mm. So that experience mindset, that is what I gleaned and learned during my time at the grooming company. Powerful. Uh -huh. Continue this story. Like I'm, yes. I'm, I'm just taking it in. <laughs> yeah. So that's in 2013. Now I'm so is that, that I'm, and also I'm also cognizant that this time there's motherhood. Mm. So you're you're not you're not doing the crazy late hours. Yeah, I had those ones I couldn't do. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that also came with a bit of a, you know, from a corporate visibility, how you're seen, yeah. how you show up. I just need to, I needed to sacrifice. Okay. I was like, hey, now family is more important. Mm. I've got a newborn. I had fan, a fantastic help. Was that a difficult decision to make? Oh, just hold on. Uh, I want to just check if the lights, there was a, there was a switch of lights. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 